Dennis Riggs is probably the only person in this room who was chauffeured to his first day of work in television. It's not as impressive as it sounds. He was hired by KFEQ-TV in his hometown, St. Joseph, Missouri, as a film editor and floor director. But he was only 14, so his parents drove him to the station until he turned 15 and got a learner's permit. Dennis has witnessed huge changes in our business, from black and white to color, film to videotape, videotape to ENG, which was birthed here in St. Louis, changing TV journalism forever. Dennis was able to use this new technology to talk his way onto the press embargo Delta Queen for an exclusive live interview with President Jimmy Carter. He was told the president himself said, let him on, let's see what this is. As you can see, we made an engine running stop and everything's being unloaded very quickly. That's because shots have been fired around here at the airport and they want to get this plane in and out as fast as possible. In between all the fires, murders, council meetings, and normal flotsam and jetsam of local TV news, there have been some memorable times. For 444 days, the world watched as Americans were held hostage in the U.S. Embassy in Iran. When released, the Americans were hidden from the media in the U.S. hospital compound in Wiesbaden, Germany. Dennis scored a global exclusive, getting the first hostage interview. Four years later, the world watched as terrorists hijacked TWA Flight 847. They sat on the tarmac in Tel Aviv for 17 days, making demands and killing hostages. The end of the drama led to another trip to Wiesbaden and another world exclusive. Had uh, one of the fellows of the original eight hijackers, not the original two, but the original eight, I'm sure you're aware of the yeah. board, uh, who played Russian roulette with me. Uh, a la The Deer Hunter, for those of you that have seen that movie, except I got the uh, pistol into the belly. And uh, no one can go through that without fully expecting that you're not going to come out of alive. Dennis's groundbreaking coverage of the Covenant Sword and Arm of the Lord white supremacist domestic terrorist group documented a host of illegal activities, including arms trafficking and fugitive smuggling. He said, quote, you know, two unarmed men could disappear awfully easily in these woods, end quote. We agreed to move down the road. So we moved down here about a mile from their property. If you take a close look, you'll see that we are still under guard. And that young gentleman is armed with a rather high-powered rifle. It led to congressional hearings and the feds laying siege to the group's compound, forcing all 200 armed members to surrender. It also led to Dennis and his family living under police protection until all the cult leaders were apprehended. Videographer Dave Sharp and Dennis were the flood brothers of the Great Flood of 93. They were up to their necks in water and in a two-page spread in the U.S. News & World Report. After a paralyzing aneurysm and a battle with the same cancer that killed Steve Jobs, Dennis was asked to lend his experience to HEC-TV, a moribund telecourse channel with the instructions to make something of it or shut it down. Thanks to a talented and dedicated team today, HEC-TV is St. Louis's leading producer of education, arts, and cultural programming, the world leader in interactive distance learning, and honored with countless local, regional, national, and international awards. And we're nominated for 24 Emmys in tonight's ceremony.